Hey besties, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. I know it's been a while since you've seen my face, but I'm back with a video. I'm happy to be here. I hope you're happy to see me. Today we're going to be doing a sort of anti-recommendation video, and I know that probably sounds like a weird concept, so let me go ahead and explain that. I'm sure you've probably seen a lot of booktubers do this sort of video where they say, if you liked this book, you'll probably like this video or even any sort of media. Like if you have a show that your friend wants you to watch, they'll probably get you to watch it by saying, oh, you really liked this show, so you're gonna like this other show that I'm recommending. I want to do the opposite of that. I am a very picky reader. There are not that many books that I like. I'm sure if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you probably know that about me. My average Goodreads rating is like a 3.2. And I find myself often thinking, this book I don't like reminds me a lot of another book I don't like. So I wanna kinda of do like the opposite, where I say, if you did not like this book, you probably will not like this book and vice versa. And I kinda of wanna see if people agree with me, I'll sort of explain my thought process, why they reminded me of each other, and what about them just made me go, no. I don't think you'll like either of these. Before we get started, I do want to thank Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Book of the Month is a subscription service that allows readers to discover new books from new and emerging authors. The way it works is their team vets hundreds of books each month and gives readers their choice from a curated selection of new and early release titles so that you can spend more time reading and less time researching. One of the best things about Book of the Month, in my opinion, is their skip policy. They allow you to skip any month where you're just not feeling the list or you can't afford it. Whatever reason it might be, you can skip it and still keep your membership and you don't get charged that month. Probably the most amazing thing about Book of the Month though is that they have the best prices for hardcovers. In the month of December, they're actually running a special deal. If you use the code JOLLY, you can get your first book for $5, which is an absolute amazing deal for one of these new releases. Book of the Month very kindly sent me all of their December picks and they have John Green's new essay book, which is a really amazing. The book that I'm most excited for is The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. This is about a set of twins that switch lives during the holidays because of different stressors going on and they both fall in love. It's giving Mary Kate and Ashley, it's giving holiday, it's giving Christmas, it's giving everything that I'm looking for in December. There's also these two really great thrillers in the mix. I feel like they just have a really wide selection of both genres and diverse authors and I think it's really great what they're doing. I love that you can get a cute little hardcover for such a great price every single month. If you're at all interested in book of the month, I'll have all the information about it down below in my description box. And yeah, let's just get into the video. So first on our list, I believe if you did not like Middle Game, you will not like Gideon the Ninth. The first thing that I think brings them together is that they're both sci-fi. That is not a bad thing in general. I do like sci-fi, but these just happen to be two sci-fi books that I did not like. And then number two, they're both long as fuck with very confusing world building that's not explained very well. Middle Game is about a set of twins who are born in a lab and then they're sent to live with two different families and observe throughout their lives and they have powers and their lives keep having them drawn back together and it's this whole thing. And Gideon the Ninth is a sort of space opera about necromancers and Gideon is the bodyguard of a necromancer and they have to go do this challenge at a mansion in space and it's like this whole thing. Those plots probably sound not similar to you at all, but I think for me, what makes them feel similar is the feelings they gave me while I was reading where I just felt like they wouldn't end and I felt really confused and kind of stupid about the world building. I like to think of myself as a very smart person. I like to think of myself as someone who's sharp when I'm reading. Like if I'm reading a thriller, I typically can guess what's gonna happen. But when it comes to like sci-fi and fantasy, if the world building is just so out there and written in a weird way where I feel like it's pretentious or I feel like an idiot reading it, then I just probably won't enjoy it. And these just kind of hit that weird note for me where a lot of people love these books. Like so many people love these books and I feel like more people than not have said that, but I, they just, they didn't do it for me. And I felt like they both were like long as fuck and I just, I, I was struggling to read them and I wanted to DNF both. So I guess what it boils down to is I think that both of them have poorly done world building and I find the sci-fi elements to be kind of hard to follow. And they both kind of dabble in both like alchemy type stuff as well as sci-fi. So they kind of have like, it's like a magic sci-fi combo. In my humble opinion, I think you will not like them, either of them, if you're a similar reader to me at all. Um, let me know down below if you disagree. But yeah, that, that's our first pairing. Next up, I think if you did not like The Starless Sea, you will not like The Shadow of the Wind. Number one thing that these two books have in common is that they're about people who find books. 
Again, that's not necessarily a bad plot point, but that is number one reason why I kind of associate them. The Starless Sea is about a guy who finds a book in a library and he's actually written into the book. And then it sort of spans three different narratives having to do with this like, underground society that has to do with books. And there is magical realism. And it's kind of a cool concept, but in practice, I found that it really dragged and I found myself asking, where is the story going and why is it happening? I really wanted to like it more than I did, but I really struggle with Aaron Morgenstern's writing. I find it very whimsical, but hard to follow. And like, I wanna be that bitch that likes it. So many people love her books. Like people like The Night Circus too. And I feel the same way about The Night Circus where I'm just like, I don't feel like the plot is giving what it was supposed to have gave. The Shadow of the Wind, similarly, is about a boy who finds a book in a lost library and the book is no longer in print and the author is a very like mysterious figure who's kind of disappeared and so the boy spends his whole life trying to find out about more about the author and sort of like getting to the bottom of that mystery and it takes place in Spain. This book literally spanned like basically the boy's like whole lifetime like from when he's like a child to when he's a grown man. I don't even remember how many pages that book is but I literally felt like I lived and died reading that book. Like I felt like it took forever. I honestly should have DNF'd it but I wanted to finish it because The Shadow of the Wind is one of those books that so many people speak so highly of. They're like, oh my God, most amazing book, like made me cry. And I was like, for why? I couldn't get into it. I found it a little bit easier to follow than The Starless Sea, like plot wise, because it's a little bit more straightforward and it doesn't have like any real like magical elements, but it just like, it was so fucking long. It was so fucking long. And when you finally find out what happened to that fucking author, for what? For what? For that? I read all that for that. No. No. No, 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 no. So that's what I would say these two books have in common is that they're like very whimsical and I feel like a very particular type of person would like them. Like they are very well loved by many people. I feel like both of these are character driven books where it's like you just like the characters so much and the whimsy of them that you'll have a good time. But for me, it's like if I don't know what's going on, I'm not having a good time. Next up, I actually have a threesome for you. Probably shouldn't call it a threesome, but I'm, I'm gonna go with it. A trio, if you will. If you did not like Catherine House, then I think you will also not like Bunny or Saw Kill Girls. All three of these books are weird shit. Catherine House is about this girl who goes to this, I think it's like after high school, this program, this school called Catherine House, and it's like really like prestigious and it's hard to get into. And while she's there, all this like weird shit happens, like weird science-y, magic-y type stuff. And you're spending the whole book being like, what the fuck is going on? Like what's going on with this like dark academia school? And in my opinion, the payoff is just not there. Like I literally finished that book like, what happened? What just happened? Bunny is even weirder. It's about this girl in this college writing program who has all these girls in her class that call each other Bunny. It's sort of like Heathers where they just all call each other the same name and they're very popular and vapid. And in the beginning, she makes fun of them and doesn't wanna be a part of them, but then they sort of invite her throughout the school year to be a part of them. I, I don't really know how much to say without ruining the plot, but there were so many times during Bunny where I was like, what the fuck is happening? Like, I feel like, I'm just not that girl. Like I, I came back from the dead and I'm not that girl. Like I want to be the person who likes weird books, but I'm just not. Soccer Girls is about these sisters who move to an island. I think they're new to the island. I don't really remember. I read this like two years ago and they find out that girls keep going missing from the island. And so they spend the book trying to like figure out what happened to them. You might be asking yourself, what do those three books have in common? Cause the plots sound really different. Number one, I think I've already said is that they're just all really weird, <laughs> but all of them have like what I feel like the author's just trying to be different. You know what I mean? Like when authors are just like, I'm different. Like this book, she's not like the other girls. But then by the end of the book, you're like, like, what the fuck did I just read? I feel like that's the feeling that all three of these gave. And I, like I said, I'm just, I'm not that girl. I just, I don't think I like weird stuff. Like I knew what was happening, but I was just kind of asking myself, why is this happening? Why, why? The whole time I was reading them, I was like mad that other people liked them. <laughs> I know that's bad to say, but I'm sure you've felt this before. Like, you know, when you're reading something that other people swear is the most amazing thing since sliced bread and you're like, how the fuck? Did you get to that conclusion? Cause I'm maybe reading a different copy of the book. Like I'm not, it's not clicking. Like it's not clicking. Lastly on my list, I think that if you did not like Station Eleven, you will not like Severance. These two books probably have the most similar plot out of any other books on this list. 
They both take place before and after fictional pandemics that basically kill half the world's population. Very weird for me to read them last year in 2020 during COVID when we were like in lockdown. That's actually not why I dislike them. Honestly, out of all the books on this list, I probably disliked these the least. Like I would probably give them like two and a half, three stars. Like they're not bad books at all. And honestly, a lot of people love them. Station 11 has won awards. I also think that they're adapting it into a mini series. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure they're adapting that. And pe people, people rave about these books. I would call them sort of post-apocalyptic, but make it literary fiction. I don't know if they're actually qualified as literary fiction, but they both have that kind of literary fiction quality where they're just sort of musings about life. A lot of the characters are ruminating on their lives like before and after these pandemics that have happened and sort of just like taking stock of things. And they're not your traditional like action-packed dystopians. Like they're quite slow in pace. I think for me, I just found them kind of boring and I really forgot about them after I read them. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this list. Let me know if you liked this video concept, if you'd like me to do more videos like this in the future. I also probably will do the opposite idea that I've done before, which is recommending books I like that I think are similar to other books. Like I'll probably do both. But if you like this kind of negative concept, and you want me to do it again, I totally will continue to make a list and do one of these in the future. Thank you again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. All the information about Book of the Month will be in the description box below if you're interested. And thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day.